Ooh, so we just finally assembled everything on the H100 because we were studying the case initially and then we just thought since we already disassembled <laughs> With any PC case, you start off by disassembling the entire case and then put in all your hardware and reassemble the entire thing around it So what we did this time, since it's an ITX case we disassembled everything and then we start the entire video from there So this is a build log on how we assemble everything in the new Cooler Master Master Case H100. So we got everything dismantled here. This is the Master Case H100, Cooler Master's new addition to the ITX lineup. And here we dismantled into a few too many parts. So power supply holder, the two side panels here, and also user manual. And uh, this is a bar that's supposed to hold your storage disk, which we'll go into later. And then front panel and also the top panel. So this is the entire case itself after you've dismantled everything. And let's just put some hardware in and see how it looks. Uh, where's my motherboard? Okay, one tip for you if you're building an ITX case, get a screwdriver with these kind of bendy tips because it helps a lot. Especially with, you know, tight entry points, especially when it comes to ITX cases. So, motherboard has been screwed in securely and now, the next one should be power supply. And you can align the screws. Oh, by the way, this Master case H100 supports only full size power supply, ATX power supplies. A pro tip to you, fit in all the cables here first. And then, connect them before putting in your power supply. It makes your life a lot easier. You should let your cable face upwards because that's where most of the empty spaces of the case goes. So that's the best place for you to hide all your extra cables. So I'm just gonna stuff it somewhere first, all these snakes. Uh, okay, so we should align the power supply holder and the screw at the back panel. Get some screws and screw it in. Okay, so now we mounted the power supply and also the motherboard together with all your CPU coolers and whatnot. So the first immediate thing that m many of you would have thought is how's the cooler going to perform because power supply and this thing is not much gap in between. So that's where this humongous fan comes in. This is an RGB fan which is the same as the H500 series of fans. There's a really good reason why the Cooler Master is actually using these kind of fans because if you look at this front panel and kind of imagine how it looks when everything is assembled this thing is somehow like a mini H500 I guess Next up we are going to mount the SSD that we have here it's just some random SSD that we have in the office There are a total of two SSD mounting points at the bottom here and also two more on this little bracket here what we'll do is we'll mount the SSD on the bottom side instead because it's tidier. Okay, so here's how you mount your SSD or any 2.5 inch storage disk to the master case H100. So what you do is you take this rubber ring, push in your screw uh, through the bottom actually, not the top. It's like this and then you have to screw in to the bottom of your SSD. So we got everything screwed into the SSD itself. So this is how you mount it. It's fairly simple. So you just put it in there and then you can see everything protruding at the bottom. Push it down at the bottom and it's in there for good. So the benefit of this mounting style is zero vibration if you're using hard disk but an SSD you won't have to worry about that. And then the next thing we should mount is the graphics card which uh, we actually plan to put an RTX 2060 Super or 2070 Super. Both of those cards are too long. This is a 2070 Mini. So only Mini cards can fit in. So it's either Galax or Zotac or whatever. So to mount the GPU, standard affair as of now. So you just take a screw. 
Okay, so GPU installed, just gonna let this stand for a while and then from here we will have to do some uh, magic. Uh, let me just stuff the cables in here real good. Be careful not to go in between your CPU cooler and power supply because that's where your fans are. Before we move on to anything, most of the important hardware are already in there. So for the sake of simplicity, we won't really attach all the power cables and whatnot. So we just keep it simple to make it look like it's fully assembled but it's not really working. So this side panel is not really meant to be removed but we remove it just for the sake of uh, showing. So how you actually put it in or remove it is actually by removing a few screws uh, on these four corners and also one at the center here. And then when you have to pop it back in, what you do is align with these little holes, square holes, and you just push it back in. Once again, this panel is not meant to be removed. We are just removing it to show you if you want to take out everything. Since we already have the motherboard installed now, we can't really screw back the side panel as well. So we'll just let it be loose, I guess. Okay, and now we will install the top panel. So let me just rotate the case here. Take the top panel once again. The top panel, this is where you should stuff all your cables at, which is around this area. So how you assemble this or take it out is by uh, first managing all your cables and then align these little latches on all four sides at the back here with the case itself. Push it down and then from here, pull it back. And then here will be flush with the case itself and that's how you know that the entire thing is assembled. After we latch everything in, we are supposed to also screw in these two little screws at the top here. The top panel is fully secured now. Actually, one reason why there's a big thing here is because you can do this. That's how you can lift up the entire ITX case. It's meant to be somewhat of a LAN party case. And now we can fully assemble everything else, which is this bracket thing and also the front panel. I will choose to assemble this first. This little bracket here, you can increase your rigidity of your case and also support up to two, two and a half inch drives. One at the top, one at the bottom. However, you don't have any fancy mounting points like the one we have at the bottom here where you can slide it on and off. But uh, yeah, you have to directly screw it in. And remember, the screw holes should be facing downwards when you screw it in. And then another thing is that you can also mount a single three and a half inch disc at the bottom here together with another two and a half inch drive. I know it's a bit confusing, but you can actually cramp that many discs in this thing. So you have a total of three two and a half inch and a single two and a half or just four two and a half inch all the way through. So I will mount this here first, uh, just align the screw holes and then the Okay, so with the bracket mounted, so right here we can see that there are literally only two more screws on this side panel. But first we will assemble this front panel first. You can see the front panel is very well made even though the whole thing is pure plastic but you have a lot of gap between the case body itself and also the front panel and there are plenty of holes as well, plenty of holes at the front as well. So let's just do the clipping. Yeah, now you can see that the entire thing looks like a quarter size H500 series case. I don't know, I'm using the H500P but when I look at this thing, it feels more like a mini H500. And finally, let me just put the side panel in, which is fairly standard. Okay, and there you go, this is the H100. So we finally completed our build, not entirely, but yeah, we left out a few things. Firstly, all the cabling inside, we left that out entirely for the sake of simplicity. Uh, you also get an RGB controller inside for the fan. As mentioned, this fan right here is RGB, the big 200mm fan. And then we also have not screwed in the side panel here. Uh, which is not meant to be removed so yeah just don't care about this side panel at all and finally uh, 
I think that's pretty much it. This case is really solid, even though it's tiny, it is built out of a plastic and metal. Everything feels good, it's rigid, and most importantly, it's tiny with a lot of focus on airflow. The I.O. panel here, you get your individual microphone and headphone jack at the front here, your power button. Once again, I think this is RGB as well, or at least it's lit up by LED. And then you get two USB 3.0 ports at the front here. Once again, the entire outlook here, this part especially with that angle and these two bars, it looks a lot like the H500 series or the C700 series. Depending on how you see it, they are both pretty similar in terms of geometry. The entire build experience is kind of weird because once again, this side panel is not meant to be removed. Whereas all the other cases we've built in, this side panel is supposed to be removed so you can do some cable management or just easy mounting of hardware at the back of this side panel. But that's not the case here. So one more thing about this case that you should take note of is the sidebar here. That one that we just showed you not too long ago. That thing you can actually mount a 3.5 inch but you cannot fit it into the case because of the power supply which is here. The hard disk will be too thick to mount it in so you have to use a 2.5 inch disk. And overall, this case is very solid and uh, you have to remember that this thing can be slid off by just taking two screws at the front and everything else is pretty standard with this kind of ITX case. One important highlight is that you don't have any bars here but you can still carry around the entire case by slotting your fingers at the back here and just lifting it up. So in conclusion, the Cooler Master Master Case H100 is a very solid ITX case although some would argue that it's a bit bigger than what they're used to for an ITX case but you get handles and whatnot it's a bit of a special case right here and the price for this case here is about 249 ringgit which we will confirm if by the time of publishing this video we have the information and overall that price is fairly reasonable for such a special little case and well it's solidly built and you get lots of airflow as well that's all for this video i hope to see you in the next video and remember like and subscribe share this video and this is the Mastercase H100. I'll see you next time.